Hello, I am here with, uh, from Politically Active. My name is Caden, and I am interviewing this lovely gentleman, Dr. Kyler uh, Sherman Wilkins. So I had to make sure I got your name right. <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to ask, how's the campaign been going so far? So far, so good. You know, it's a very uh, tiring and exhausting experience. Um, they're increasingly expensive, and there's a lot of campaign stops to run. Uh, run to, but you know, honestly, it's been really great meeting people, talking to them. Um, yeah, so I, I feel like even though it's exhausting, it's also energizing to get you know people who are so uh, enthusiastic about public schools and having a conversation with them about how do we strengthen our public schools. So it's been great. So. Uh, on the topic of that, in your interview with the Springfield Daily Citizen today, you mentioned that you were the first vice president of the NAACP here in Springfield. You're a member of the GLO Center and also a board member of the Springfield Foundation for Health. So I was really curious, what strengths do you think will best come from those different experiences and roles that you've had that you can apply to being a member of the school board? Yeah. Well, I think it's important to have individuals who have experience serving on boards. Um, board service is very different than being a legislator or a politician, right? These are nonpartisan boards. You're one member of a seven-person board, and you're supposed to work collaboratively uh, to carry out the mission of the organization. So I think for me, serving on NAACP, GLOW, Missouri Foundation for Health, they've given me the opportunity to learn what it means to be a board member, which means that we oversee our CEO or our, you know, our administrator. Uh, we give them the support they need to carry out the policy and the strategic plan that we carry out for them. Um, and we have to learn how to uh, disagree agreeably. And so I think having that ability to serve on boards, talk about that being, uh, we may disagree, but we're all aligned on a common goal, um, has, has prepared me quite, quite well for serving as a board. Yes, and you spoke about that in the same interview about wanting to serve on a distinctly nonpartisan board. Yeah. I just wanted to ask, uh, how will you as a member of the school board approach those situations and where people might be completely unwilling to work with you because of those sorts of partisan poli or political views? And I guess a good example of that would be, uh, you know, how are we going to bring together the kinds of people who want to get a bunch of books off the shelves with the librarians who want to protect as much of education as possible? Yeah, yeah. That's a great question. You know, I think, um, you know, I'm a professor and I teach sociology to a bunch of students who have no idea what sociology is. And, and um, oftentimes sociology encourages people to think about the world in a different way. And what I've learned from my experience as a professor, we're also having conversations with individuals. You've got to meet people where they are. I think when you come into a space and say, hey, I'm right, you're wrong, you know, and just kind of beat them over the head with your, your rightness, that's not, that's kind of productive. So for me, I approach, like, and I just ask the question, what do you need to see from me to convince, so, so that you're convinced that my perspective is spot on? And I will equally say, I need to see this from you to be brought over to your side. So for me, I think the approach needs to be rooted in data and evidence and best practices. So um, I think it's really important that you acknowledge your biases, check them at the door, and then come into a space and be able to look at all the different angles, uh, ask for more data or input or information before you make a final decision. Um, in my experience, that tends to work as long as everyone is in good faith operating toward a common solution or a common goal. Uh, but I also want to say that there are certain things that I just stand on principle. I, I do not believe in banning books, period. Uh, I believe that every single child, regardless of their sexual orientation, gender identity, race, ethnicity, uh, belongs in public schools, period. And so I believe that public dollars need to remain in public schools. I'm against vouchers and charter schools, period. So I think that there are certain things that I'm principled on, um, but um, I think there are other areas where there might be some level of disagreement and, and we need to find a common goal. Um, and again, I think my, my experience serving on boards has allowed me to be principled where, where I need to be, while also being willing to compromise to get things done for the, for the good of the organization, or the, the mission of the organization. And you mentioned something that I, I was going to ask this question last, but I think I want to ask it because it's pretty relevant to what sure. you just asked. Of course, we're kind of in a pretty big crisis for LGBTQ people in this country where people are really wanting to go after them and target them, especially especially transgender people. So I just wanted to ask, as a member of the board, uh, what do you think the board can do to make Springfield schools as safe of a place for LGBT people as possible? I think the first thing is to listen. Uh, you know, I think that we've seen uh, several um, examples of members of the community coming to school board meetings 
uh, making statements or things that they need or concerns that they have. Uh, we've also had board members who are currently sitting on the board saying things like, we're going to take away safe zone stickers or going on, you know, talk radio, talking about teachers being groomers. Uh, so I think we just need to take a step back and listen to the community to acknowledge that you don't necessarily have to agree with, you know, and how an individual identifies. We have to respect it. And, and, and the reality is um, LGBT folks exist. Trans folks exist. They're in our public schools. And they're just as deserving of a quality education as anybody else. And so I think we need board members who understand that. And as a member of the community myself, LGBT community, um, I, 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 I'm plugged in. I know what the needs are. And I will always be an advocate for those. those needs. Sorry, i got to pull up my phone for the last question here. Uh, just the last question. With the struggles that the upcoming Generation Alpha is having, you know, we're seeing a lot of polls that are suggesting that despite how active they are on technology, uh, that there is a certain uh, unprecedented high amount of technical illiteracy and even struggles to learn in public schools for Generation Alpha kids. So I just was really curious to know what would uh, you as a member of the school board do to face those challenges that people are suggesting Generation Alpha may be facing? Yeah, uh, you know, this is a larger structural, I think, issue that um, goes above and beyond what any individual school board can do. That being said, I do think there are some policies that we could put into place or to, to help, kind of help address some of these issues that you point out. Um, one thing that, that I'm always concerned about is the ability of our teachers in the classroom to um, be creative and innovative when they're teaching their students. I think we have a lot of um, situations in which teachers are given a step curriculum and told to follow that curriculum to the T. And that stifles their ability to learn, or teach effectively, it stifles their creativity, it makes them boring, it contributes to students maybe acting out or not doing so well. There's also a phenomenon of teaching to the test, which means that we're not instilling in our young people create you know, critical thinking skills, logic. Um, so I think, uh, you know, to get at your question in a little uh, different way, I think one way that the school district, uh, the, the board rather, can be uh, can impact this issue is to allow our teachers the agility and, uh, and uh, the agility to be able to adapt. Uh, to the classroom needs of their particular students. And if they do feel that there are students who are you know, not as technologically adept or technologically literate, um, then perhaps they can you know, suspend teaching the curriculum to the team in this particular case and address that need, right? Um, I think that states should have standards, but those standards um, should be guide point, guidelines or guideposts, and then teachers and school districts have the ability to meet the specific needs of their particular students. And I, I, so I, I think less of this top-down approach and more like keeping education education policy local to allow the school board to uh, address the specific needs of our students. Well, uh, that's all the questions I had for you. Thank right. you so yeah. much for your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And I wish you the best of luck with your election. Thank you. Thank you.